All right, good morning, everybody. How are you doing whenever you're watching these readings? If you are interested or looking for uh, the January readings I did for each zodiac sign, there's a card right there, or there's a link in the description box. Also, same thing goes, I did a 2024 forecast for each zodiac sign. I will put all that in the description box. If there's not one right over my shoulder here, then there'll be one in the description box. Look for playlists. That's what we're talking about. All right, let's see where we're going today. Welcome to the new year. I hope everybody is, is happy and healthy and looking forward to something amazing this month and this year. That is my wish for you, something amazing. All right, darling, air. <laughs> new life. What's this about? Transformation. Wow. Okay. Some of you have been a little pessimistic. Um, some of you are also thinking about a new life. And contrary to what a fair amount of manifesting folks tell you, uh, thinking is not gonna cut it. You're gonna have to take some kind of action. And I also feel like it depends on where the thinking is rooted. Are you rooted in um, an, uh, a feeling of optimism and growth or are you rooted in a feeling of pessimism and, oh, this will never work? Because I don't care how magical uh, you your mantras are and things like that. Nothing will change if you're still in that kind of space. I'm going to say energy. I was going to say mindset and mindset is critical for sure. But um, the energy of the intention is really where you focus right now or where you should be focusing uh, for the correct, correct. Mm, I hate that. Uh, for the uh, kind of transformation that you're looking to create in your life. Okay. So what is the feeling? How are you feeling about new life and change rather than how you're just thinking about it? Okay. You can think all the beautiful thoughts you want, but if the intention is rooted in fear or uh, I don't really want this, but somebody told me I need to do this in order to get where I want to go. Not going to happen. Okay, so let's see where the, the reading takes us. So this is a little bit about meditation and being present in the moment. Okay, being present in the moment is an intuitive space. It is a space of reception to ideas. So when you get all twisted around, and we all do, get all twisted around in thinking about a certain situation or fearing a certain situation, what you want to do is bring yourself back to center and ground yourself and be super present in the moment. That's the fastest way to get out of this, you know, like a, a monkey brain kind of thing. Bring yourself super duper into the moment. And I realize that that is a physical experience, but it will connect you to your intuition much more than um, sort of trying to align your thoughts. Uh, it's like, don't, don't push that. Instead, allow the thoughts to be what they are and ground yourself. That's going to be a faster and more effective way. We're going to be talking about intuition and how to really align with it, how to open up your clairs, how to open up psychically uh, in our Pathfinder group. And that's going to be starting at the end of January uh, Pathfinders exists and has existed for several years, but the intuitive lessons are going to start at the end of February. And I'm going to take it all the way through 2024 because I don't think there's anything like repetition uh, to help you sort of align. The lovers, King of Swords, very aligned again, very present in the moment. King of Swords is like, I am here, baby. Okay, I am here, here for it. Nine of Cups. Six of Pentacles, the temperance energy of alignment, well, alignment or um, I'm going to say balance because the Six of Pentacles is also balanced to me. It's about give and take in a relationship. Is it equal? Does it feel equitable? Those two things aren't the same thing because sometimes we give more than we get and other times we take more than we give and if it was always 50 50, that would be kind of a not that'd be an artificial thing, because sometimes you do need 
other people and sometimes they need you. So if you're if you're taking from other people and you're never giving back, that's something to be aware of. Or if friends, frenemies, I've had several of these um, take and take and take and never give anything back, uh, then that's something else. It's it's to be aware of. It's not... Um, you can be aligned with a giver archetype, right? A, um, a very sort of nurturing archetype, but when it becomes codependent or enabling or something like that, that, that ceases to be helpful for either person. So I feel like this is about aligning your mindset or aligning your intention with the action that you're putting in the give and take in a particular situation. Are you aware that you're taking or are you aware that you're giving or over giving or overtaking? And there's something here about getting that in balance because the lover's card is a choice point and the nine of cups is like, listen, if you want something that's really aligned, something that's, you know, what you're dreaming of or what you want to create, um, are you prepared to be the other side of that equation? Are you prepared to be, um, if you're, if you're seeing that you're really needing other people to kind of feed you uh, then uh, can you align yourself to feed yourself? Because I promise you that's one thing that will that will stop a relationship in its tracks is if someone feels depleted. And the, be the people who are best at aligning um, don't get depleted because the energy of being connected is the thing that's bringing in... Um, sort of power behind their intentions. So they're wanting to create a wonderful, sparkly, amazing kind of relationship. They're wanting to create a career that is expansive and really uh, jazzes me up. And, you know, when we get careers that deplete us, it's because it doesn't, it doesn't really give back to us. And you can think about the money all you want, but the fact is that only goes so far. You can only buy so many cashmere sweaters, okay? And before it's like, it's not keeping me warm anymore. So the Four of Swords is about healing this and aligning with something that's more balanced, aligning with a new life that is transformative and how how absolutely relevant that is to um, the new year and the intentions we make. Three of Cups, Tower. Been seeing the tower a lot lately, okay? Knight of Cups. I feel like some of you are, some of you are aligned with the idea of unavailable, emotion, uh, emotionally unavailable, which this can be, okay? Emotionally unavailable. When you go, when you are, why do I keep attracting married men? Why do I keep attracting uh, people who can't, commit? Why do I keep doing that? When you're asking yourself about what is your intention, you may be very indignant about that. Like, I don't want that. I really don't want that. But there's something in you that is aligned with that. And isn't it better just to know that and kind of work with that rather than just resist it and say, no, that's not me. Um, I feel like that's what this, uh, some of you could be hanging out with a group of people who are aligned with an energy that either you don't want or you do want. And some of you are aligned with a new group of people that are in some kind of weird alignment with love. You are like the five people you spend the most time around. Do they have healthy relationships or don't they? Interesting to think about, right? So Knight of Cups, the moon, you're not blaming anybody, you're not blaming anybody, but I am saying to you that like, just pay attention to who you're spending the most time with and how you're spending your time and how the energy of those situations impacts you. There's something here definitely about um, community, friends, circles, groups, because we're seeing a lot of community in these cards with that three of cups and that nine of cups and the lovers card. 
And the King of Swords is about getting really super clear. That's what this air sign, that's what this air is. It's not about our thoughts, but it is about getting super clear intentionally and taking in the information. I feel like some of you in this, uh, we have a new moon in Capricorn coming up uh, January 11th. And some of you, it's likely will be leaving people behind. Okay. Knight of Swords to go towards something much more aligned. So, okay. So this is like the aha moment of like, oh, wow. Look at what I'm dealing. Look at who's around me. Look at what they're saying. Look at their habits. Look at how they're behaving. And I am like them because I am aligned with them. Don't say, oh, I'm not, I'm not like them or anything. Hmm. Eight of Swords and the Seven of Cups. This is about choosing differently, choosing differently, the connections we have. And some of you may also say that, well, I, I can't, um, I can't shift that. This is my family or these are my best friends or something like that. I think this is about intention. Very much so. I'm going to clarify a few things here. I'm going to clarify the tower because nine of swords, eight of swords, and the seven of cups. We're kind of going, it's almost like we're going backwards here. Five of cups, three of cups. We're going back into the, how did I get here? How did I get here? And why is new life and transformation ahead? Because it's out of alignment with what you're trying to create. So it's almost like you're backing the truck up here. Okay, so tower, clarify what the tower is. King of Pentacles, Two of Swords, Queen of Swords, King and Queen of Swords here, and the Fool. Absolutely uh, a new beginning. Some of you are seeing um, that the intentional, the intentionality is about being safe in this group of people that you're in. Some of you are seeing it as very money conscious or very status conscious, uh, or how it, you know, some, uh, you might be dealing with a friend group that is all about like, how does it look to other people? They might be very aware of that. And you might be dealing with a set of people who are very aware of their own situations and are working to move through them working to move through the the way that they're living their life. The five of cups, the king of pentacles and queen of swords. I just get the sense this is king of pentacles is very much about being grounded, right? Grounded. The two of swords is like not, it's like becoming conscious, right? Especially with this queen of swords, becoming conscious so that you can move toward what you actually want to create something that is reciprocal, right? Something that is, and, uh, uh, over time, a balance of give and take. Like I said, some days it's 90-10, some days it's 40-60. It's rarely ever 50-50 all the time. Uh, and if that's kind of a yardstick, I feel like that's something that uh, it might be interesting to look at. Is there a scorekeeper in you archetype? Is there someone who is very aware of people taking and giving? Or is it like completely unconscious that you're not really seeing? Um, why is the five of cups here in the middle? Nine of Wands, this is a pattern. Two of Cups, Chariot, and the Judgment card. You are going, okay, so if you're resonating with what I'm saying, which is feels like about five or six different messages, you know, thrown into a blender and j -j 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 -j. This is, I feel like some of you have a test coming up, all right? This is a similar pattern, the Nine of Wands, the Two of Cups, and the Chariot coming right at you, a new love situation that's coming at you. This is a timeline decision. That's what timelines are. They're choices. Do we make choices based on an intentional um, desire to move in a different direction? Or are we still making choices based on our family archetypal experiences, the roles we were given, uh, what we were told was right and wrong, uh, whether or not it aligns with our actual values. 
So I see this as like making a new kind of choice. Like you're really becoming aware of the mindset and the thoughts that is sort of sabotaging your intentionality. Nine of swords and eight of swords. Why is, th why is this here? I feel like you got a test coming at you. Suddenly with that tower. King of wands, page of wands, the two of pentacles and the four of pentacles. So some of you are seeing this person that's coming toward you in a way that is not them. I think you see somebody through a prism of perspective of what it is that you hope this person is not who they truly are. That's why I was talking about being super present in the moment. I think this is coming up within um, a short time for some of you, uh, the new moon in Capricorn. And I do feel like this is going to be a, a bit of a stressful kind of timeline choice. All right. A new timeline is calling. A new timeline that's not in that old paradigm. That's not in that old pattern, old pattern of relationships. Can we make a new choice? All right. I'm going to continue on with this reading. Uh, if this is, if this is resonating for you, we'll go deeper. And there's a link in the description box below. If you want to follow me, continue on. I'll see you over there. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.